I was 12, and my older sister and I were home alone for the weekend. I was waiting for a friend to pick me up and getting restless. There was a knock on the door. Thinking it was her, I ran to answer it without checking through the peephole. A man was standing there with a clipboard and said he needed to check our gas meter. I was entrenched in the disappointment of my friend still not having arrived, so I just told him, yeah, sure, whatever you need to do. I didn't notice at the time, but he wasn't really dressed as a city official. He had on a green and purple shirt with bold stripes, like the host of Blue's Clues. He came in and immediately went up the stairs to where our bedrooms were and walked into the open door of my room, the typical girly girl room with pink and glitter. My sister came down the stairs at almost that exact moment. She said, oh, is that Daphne's dad? Why is he going upstairs? I complained about how Daphne wasn't here and was going on about how unreliable she was when my sister cut me off. Wait, wait. If Daphne isn't here, who is that? I said, he's here to read the gas meters. Her face turned white. She flung open the front door and dragged me out, hand clamped over my protesting mouth. She said, our gas meters are outside. Neither of us had a cell phone. It was the 60s. And obviously, we weren't going back in the house to call the authorities on the landline phone. Then my ever-resourceful sister had a stroke of genius. A man was walking right by our house, and she motioned him over. She called, loudly, into the house. Oh, Dad, it's good you're home. A man from the city is here to read the gas meters upstairs. And just like she'd hoped, this man in the street said, What are you talking about? The man in the striped shirt bolted out of the house. The man on the street asked us repeatedly if we were okay, if we needed him to stay and wait in the yard with us until our parents came home. He was very sweet. We were so startled that we barely thanked him before slamming and locking the doors and windows. As irate as my sister was that I let someone in the house, she begged me not to call the authorities because my parents left her in charge and she worried she'd be in trouble. I didn't want to catch any heat from my carelessly allowing some guy in, so I was on the same page. Three weeks later, a girl in our community went missing. Same MO. She was home alone and authorities found the front door wide open and no signs of forced entry. My sister and I discussed our options, but deep down, knew we had no choice but to come clean. We told the police everything. I don't know if it ever helped, but they did tell us they had reason to believe it was the same man. They also tracked down the man who helped us on the street. It turns out we already knew him. He worked in the butcher shop. We just didn't recognize him. He was lifelong friends with the family after this incident. Our parents were mortified. They weren't angry with us, just glad we were okay. Though they did review all of the rules of caution and didn't leave us home alone for a while. They found the girl and said that she had been held for a few days and then burned alive. They never caught the man, but fear not. He was in what appeared to be his early 30s in the 1960s. So in any case, he has to be dead by now. I just thank God every day for my sister's resourcefulness and quick action. False meter reader, let's not meet. So I'm a 23 year old female. I live in a townhouse with my two children, two and six months old. My fiance did live with us until about two weeks ago. I'm a stay at home mom and when he did live with us, my ex worked evenings. Also, sorry for the long post. Let me set the scene. We live in a tiny town in northern Pennsylvania. My line of townhouses sits in front of a big field that runs to a line of woods. As far as I'm aware, these woods stretch for at least a few miles and I'm not aware of any other houses in there or any roads that lead through them. 
My living room has three windows that look into a field and my bedroom on the second floor only has one window that also faces that way. People do tend to walk their dogs back in the field and sometimes kids play back there, but I rarely see anyone close to my house. For that reason, I tend to leave my blinds and my curtains open. So in July of 2019, I was laying in bed and trying to fall asleep. I was looking out the window and I noticed small red and white lights just outside. I got up and looked and I realized that the lights were coming from a drone. I ran downstairs to find my fiancé sitting in the living room and I ran to the window. I told him what I saw but of course when he looked it was gone. I was paranoid that the drone may have had a camera on it and someone was watching me. I then kept my blinds closed for a while after that. Fast forward to January of this year, I guess I stupidly got comfortable and assumed that whoever was flying the drone was a one-time creep. My blinds were open and I had just gotten out of the shower. I was sitting in my bed pretty much naked except for my underwear, scrolling through my phone. When out of the corner of my eye, I saw the lights again out of the dark window. It was that damn drone again. I ran out of the room and waited for a few minutes. I peeked back in the room and the drone was gone. I quickly shut my blinds and got dressed. I honestly felt sick of how stupid I was especially when I was practically naked. Now for the really disturbing part. My two year old son and I were out in the field three days after I kicked out my boyfriend and we were playing ball. I had my six month strapped to me in a baby carrier. Probably about a half hour after we were out in the field, I heard a slight whirling noise coming towards us. It was that damn drone flying towards us. I look around and I didn't see anyone and the drone stopped right over us. I freaked out and grabbed my son and dragged him into the house. I went inside and closed the blinds and I called my mom. She told me to keep an eye out and I said that I would. So a little while later, my son likes to line his toys up along the windowsill, so I figured it wouldn't hurt to open it just a little, maybe an inch or so. And a little while later, after we ate dinner, it was almost dark. I was feeding my six month old and my son was playing. He was standing by the window and lining up his toys. He started saying da da. I assumed he was just missing his father and I dismissed him by saying that we were going to see him that weekend. He kept on saying da da. I then look up and saw him pointing to the window under the little gap the blinds didn't cover. I froze. I then remember he calls any man with facial hair da da because it reminds him of his father. But there was no way someone would be that bold to actually come up to my window. Not when my neighbors are literally right there. Anyone could see them, but then again, there aren't any lights back there, so unless someone actually steps out of their house, I guess no one would really see them. I thought for a brief moment that maybe it was my ex, but then I remembered he would be at work at this time. I ran to the window and moved my son. I didn't want to lift the blinds, but honestly, I was sure it had to be the person who had been creeping on me for the past year and I wanted to see who it was. I then pushed the blinds up and was looking right at a man who I had definitely never seen before, crouching right in front of me. He was bald with a mustache and a goatee. I have no idea how old he was. He could have been anywhere from 30 to 50. When he saw me, he smiled then stood up. I yelled back to him to fuck off and that I was calling the police. I was about to close the blinds when he said something that I couldn't hear. I told him to leave once again and then he said it louder, I just want to talk to you. I shook my head no and yelled the same thing to him. He started slapping his hands on the window and yelling no over and over again. I grabbed my phone and scared that he was going to break the window, I dialed 911. My kids were crying from all the yelling and I felt that I was on the verge of tears. I then told the operator what was going on and the whole time I was on the phone, the man was pounding on the window. He was yelling all kinds of nonsense and I only caught some of it. He said he had been watching me for months and that I'm beautiful and he wants me to come with him and he'll kill my kids if I don't. The operator told me to go to an upstairs room and hide until the police arrive. My town doesn't have a police department so we have to rely on the state police. She said it would be maybe 20 minutes but to stay on the phone with her. 
The man was practically punching my window and he was just screaming like a maniac. I was about to grab my kids and run upstairs when I heard someone else screaming. Then the man bolted. I then look out and I saw my neighbor and his girlfriend. I opened the window and my neighbor said that he heard the man so he ran around the building. He then said when the creep heard him, he ran back in the woods and disappeared in the tree line and he said that he also called the police. I then thanked them about a hundred times and the police arrived about ten minutes later. They did a quick search around the building and the tree line and obviously they didn't find anything. I've been super paranoid and I've been staying at my parents since it happened. I don't know why the guy targeted me or why he waited so long to do something. I'm just so happy that my neighbors were there to intervene or who knows what may have happened. So to the creep who had been stalking me and my family for the last year, I genuinely hope that we never meet again. I'm new to sharing my weird happenings, but this was so recent that it still has me reeling. I want to scream, but I guess typing will just have to do. So, for some context. Sometime in late 2019, I started seeing someone, we'll call him Shu. Shu seemed nice enough and was generally what appeared to be a somewhat normal guy. He kept insisting we move in together despite dating for only a few months and the fact that I already own a house. That should have been enough to tell me to run, but no, it didn't. Shu started showing up at my house late at night without announcing himself or being invited. At first it wasn't too bad, but then it became nightly. He then started lying for attention, even going as far as to claim that a close friend died. No, a close friend did not die. He would show up to my house drunk and demand attention and refuse to follow my house rules. If I did let him in, he would refuse to leave. Shu's behavior kept getting worse and worse, showing up drunk from being at bars all night during COVID, demanding my attention despite knowing that I'm a high risk. He tried one last time to get into my home and I cut it off right there and I told him to leave me alone. The next morning, I got a call at 5 a.m. to come into work on my day off. I was annoyed, but I agreed. Then he started calling me nonstop. I would tell him to leave me alone and hang up on him again and again. I assumed it was my boss calling to tell me he was here to pick me up, but it wasn't. It was you. Well, your boss is here for you. Sure enough, at 7 a.m. he was camped out on my porch and tried to grab me in broad daylight in front of my boss. This kind of behavior went on for nearly a week. My employees refused to let me walk home after he started showing up at my workplace at closing time and would try to cut me off when I was trying to get into my house. Found out he kept on calling because he could hear my phone ringing through the thin walls of my old home and trying to locate exactly where I was. Every day I would have upwards of 20 phone calls and 50 texts. I finally called the police after he threatened that I was too poor for a restraining order. The cops drew the line right then and there and took it as a direct threat to my well-being. When I got home that day, I noticed cigarette ash all over my porch and a hole burned into my patio chair. Soon after, I found a window in the basement forced open with a surgical mask on the floor. I told my roommate and my neighbor what has been going on and I gave a description of Shu and told them to be on the lookout. Things quieted down after a few months and the phone calls from VPNs had finally stopped. I was in the car with my housemate earlier this week and I mentioned the smudge on the garage door. He parks in the front of the garage, not in it, when he told me, yeah, I think a homeless guy was squatting in the garage for a little while, maybe a few weeks. I found a bunch of clothes in there and then they disappeared a couple weeks ago. My heart dropped into my stomach. I noticed tracks in the snow were too big for my housemate to have left. But then I thought, no way, it couldn't be. I was shoveling snow all through the night for my neighbors all winter and he was literally within arm's reach of me, able to see directly into my windows and my house. And yes, I scolded my housemate. 
I get that he's a guy and doesn't really get when a woman says he's dangerous, call the cops if anything weird happens around the house, but come on man. Shu, I know you're still around, let's not meet again, for your sake. 